Welcome back and thank you for joining us again today. Uh, we're working on the sixth of our seven part series of revenue cycle and today's topic is complexities of the revenue cycle charge capture process. Basically, when I think of the revenue cycle charge capture process, I try to divide it into three specific uh, components or contributing factors, if you will. And those really center around people, process, and technology. Uh, those of us in supply chain and revenue cycle and even pharmacy probably focus on these three components in all of our daily activities. So I'm going to kind of highlight the um, charge capture process in these three factors today. Well, we'll start with people. What do the people do in the revenue cycle or charge capture process? You've heard me talk a lot about the process. Well, let's talk about what actually is occurring from the resource perspective. So your folks at the front lines are scheduling, they're coding, they're putting your medical records together, they're doing your collections. Um, they're your dedicated resources in there day in and day out trying to make sure that all the information for charge capture is being assembled. Um, they're the people who really are designated uh, to enter the appropriate charges when a service or a product is, is being provided to your patients. So you need to make sure, again, I'm going to stress the education and training component to support best practice. The people at the front lines need to know what the expectations are. Um, that process that we talked about for new additions or changes or deletions, whether it be to your charge capture process or even, you know, your new item ads for your, for your item master. You want to make sure that this process is being adhered to and it was communicated to the right people who are responsible for doing the task. Uh, we have lots of people contributing, uh, whether it be your patient access people doing the scheduling or whether it being your medical records people doing the documentation. And you also have your coding people, the people who are responsible for making sure that the appropriate revenue code, charge code, um, edits are being followed, modifiers are being adhered to. So you want to work cooperatively and make sure that you're generating a complete medical record for your claim submission. So those people need to be involved at all the right times when you're making decisions in your charge master or your charge capture process about what this service is going to involve or how you're going to represent this service in your charge master. So again, go back to talk to go back and talk to these people about how you're going to get them involved and what information they need to communicate effectively and what information needs to be documented in your charge master, more importantly, to get that claim out the door accurately the first time. I like to say that the administrative staff is kind of the backbone of charge master, but if I really think about it from a global perspective or from um, you know the charging perspective in general i'm going to say your clinicians are probably the most integral part because those folks are the ones who know what they're doing they're performing the service um, we can code we can read a medical documentation or a medical record and try to code it appropriately but if we go back to the clinicians the nurses the physicians they know exactly what they provided so you want to make sure that you're supporting them and that you're guiding them effectively and documenting the services and documenting the CDM to represent what they're doing. Um, you want to make sure that you're justifying your level of care. So your documentation from a charge capture perspective has to support it. And the people who are involved, again, going back to our people component, that they understand and know what they're doing uh, when it comes to your charge capture process. So let's talk about your complexities now from a process perspective. Um, patient access is probably the first point that most of your patients engage with your process from a hospital perspective. So what are they doing to support best practice and data integrity? Are we making sure that when we're getting the information from um, the patient that we're putting the correct spelling of the patient's name into your system? Are we making sure that we captured their date of birth, that we got their payer information appropriately, you know, appropriately uh, documented in your systems? These seem like trivial things, but from a perspective of, of revenue integrity, they're crucial. So you want to make sure that the processes are in place so that the people can follow them appropriately. 
I've talked to you a few times about um, charges and mapping to multiple departments. Um, we need to demand that that process is synchronized. If you have a situation in your organization where the item master and the charge master have a disconnect or not synchronized, uh, you're going to have a revenue integrity issue. So you want to make sure that when you're doing your mapping, that you're supporting it as um, effectively as you can so that that information represented in the charge master matches the information in the item master. I can't stress that enough. And that goes back to things like descriptions. The descriptions are appropriate in both, that the charge codes are correct, that the revenue codes are correct, that you have your uh, modifiers in place where they're, they're necessary. Again, document your process, document your workflow so that you can make it a little bit easier on the people who are charged with carrying out the process. So now let's talk about billing and claims management. Documentation has to be complete. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you don't have the complete documentation in place, you can support whatever claims you want, but you're not gonna get reimbursed for it. So you wanna make sure that the claims are correct, that they passed all through your payer edits, your user-defined edits, and that once they've you know, gone out onto the EDI or the claim submission form that they're accurate. So again, the process has to start at the beginning, has to be documented, and has to be complete in order to support the back end that we've talked about in our previous uh, sessions of getting in the reimbursement that's so crucial from a hospital financial perspective. So we've talked about the process, but what we haven't talked about is the guidance, the regulatory compliance perspective. I've stressed this throughout all the presentations so far to date. How do you make sure you're compliant? Well, first you have to document the information that you've been given. So going back to your people, making sure that the people have been informed and informed appropriately if there have been updates or changes. And then you want to make sure that your process is in place to support that. If you have a dated process, it's not going to do you any good when it comes time to submit your claim or when it comes time for reimbursement. So make sure that you've capitalized on that and that you have everything in place to support your compliance as well as your reimbursement. We haven't talked a lot uh, throughout the presentations about the contract component or the management or analysis of your contracts. So I want to get a little bit into that because that is part of the process of charge integrity or revenue integrity. Do you have the right information in place to support that? Have you captured the right data points? Um, are you reviewing those data points or that um, you know, big data, if you will, as we refer to it in the healthcare industry. Is someone leveraging that information to negotiate with your payers? I think that's an important step when we're defining the, the processes and discussing the processes for revenue uh, cycle integrity and charge capture. So you want to make sure that you've instilled that best practice methodology as part of your process for, for revenue cycle in your organization. So if no one is doing that today, or if no one's charged with that, you want to make sure that you have that in place in order to, to get that part of the uh, process going forward. All right, let's talk about technology. We talked about our people and our process. So now what do the people do in order to, or what do they utilize, excuse me, in order to get the technology component um, where it needs to be? System integration is imperative. If your systems don't talk, which we all know that that happens with many of our hospital or healthcare system, then you need to build bridges or you need to, you know, put the um, fixes in place to make sure that you can communicate one system with the other, at least extrapolate the information to support your claim submission and your charge capture. Um, Revenue cycle in general can be very siloed. Uh, those of us who are supply chain folks in the room or pharmacy folks in the room listening to this presentation today, we've operated pretty much in our own world. But now today in this environment with you know EMR, EHR, the interoperability component, we need to make sure that we've communicated and that we've helped our, our systems integrate in whatever way possible within your organization. Um, so whether that is investing in a new EMR or EHR, whether that's just making sure that you've, you've built those bridges or the technology component to support that so that you don't have any lost revenue. And the claim submission as part of the technology component. 
The systems are siloed, so how do you get the information to transfer appropriately? Well, that's something that you need to kind of work out as far as your process flow. So you have to get the right people in place, you have to discuss the process flow, and you have to discuss what aspects need to flow into the, the technology component that you've deemed appropriate for this, and you need to make sure that, that you've tested it. I don't know how many times I've, I've worked on a project where everyone's put the pieces of the puzzle together, but no one's tested it to make sure that the outcome is correct. So you want to test your process um, once you define what it's going to be and make sure that what you uh, wanted out of your technology or out of that bridge that you built, et cetera, is actually what is coming out of it. What if you don't have the capabilities? What if your system is limited? How are you going to address that from a complexity standpoint? Um, be sure you, you understand what really is occurring with the data integration. As I stressed in my previous uh, statement about making sure that the, um, you know, the silos are broken down, that you're communicating the information appropriately, you want to make sure that the information that you're looking at is accurate or is, or is what you think it is. Um, Sometimes when you're dealing with technology limitations or, or things that you know, you're having to adjust or kind of bring together on its own, that sometimes a data element may get misconstrued or put in the wrong place. Um, you know, don't think you know the answer. Make sure you check and double check and then you can put the process into, into effect to make sure that you get what you need out of the technology that you're utilizing and the data that you're referring to. Um, variations. Um, can equate to very different scenarios. And that leads to charge capture, missed revenue opportunities, and overall, it, it could lead you to some compliance or some regulatory concerns. So you wanna make sure when you're tech addressing your technology challenges that you are looking at the final outcome component. And now what you'll see here are some lessons learned from the field. I put a few different um, common risk factors together for you on the slide. Um, going to talk about what the results are, what the controls are. I'm not going to talk about all of them today, but just to kind of give you a few scenarios that we've addressed throughout our presentation so far to date. CDM is missing your services. If That's a common risk factor we see all across the board. What's the result? The result is your clinical transaction is never built. What do you do to fix that? You want to put a control in place, a best practice policy for charge capture, as we've discussed. Um, Incorrect unit of measures. We haven't talked too much about that. We've mentioned it in passing. But what does that do if you have an incorrect unit of measure or a disparity between the unit of measure and your item master as opposed to your charge master? Well, it impacts your transactions using incorrect dosages. So that's a concern. You want to have a self-auditing process in place with your CDM to your PDM or your item master. You want to do a unit of measure review. And you want to utilize technology to automate that if it's available to you. Uh, if it's not available, then we'll do it the old-fashioned way. We all know how to get out our Excel spreadsheets if we need to, so we'll do that. Um, if your CDM isn't updated for coding rules or coding changes, what do you do then? What's the result? Uh, the result will be that all of your transactions will go out with the wrong code. No one wants that to happen. Maybe you have a claim scrubber that'll catch it, maybe you don't. But again, let's utilize our technology to address root causes. Let's put a self-auditing process in place to look at some of these issues. And let's make sure that we are reviewing and monitoring as we say we are. Um, there's information that we could address from a risk factor with documentation. If your documentation is poor, there's a, there's a situation where you could have some knowledge failure. If, you're, if you haven't communicated well, as we discussed, with your clinicians on the front lines, then you have, a, you have a reliance on their own knowledge or what they think the knowledge should be. And then you have you know, back-end issues when it comes to the revenue cycle and what actually goes out on your claim as to what should go out on your claim. So you want to, again, look to have a defensible policy in place. You want to document according to the appropriate edits and guidelines and regulatory and compliance um, mandates, and you want to get that into effect. I could go on all day. I could discuss probably 20 more common risk factors. Um, but we'll end here with maybe um, your clinical department disengaging, and that'll be the last one we'll discuss today. What happens if you lose your clinical department along the way? As we discussed in our previous presentations many times, they're at the front lines, they know what they're doing. If they lose track or if they're you know, at risk to pick the wrong charge or the wrong you know, code, if that may be the case, well then you have, you have increases in errors and you also have um, 
concerns with staff turnover. If your staff is changing or if your staff gets discouraged because the information is available to them, then the wrong information goes out on your claims, your interdepartmental communication methodology broke down, and you're back where you started. So you want to, again, like I said, make sure that you're you're putting all of these uh, tips, tricks, methodologies that we've discussed throughout the presentations into effect, and then you can address these common risk factors with some, some real controls and some real positive opportunity. All right, I want to thank you for your time today for the uh, presentation. I want to hope you'll stay tuned for the common mistakes and solutions in charge capture that's yet to come. That'll be the final in our seven-part presentation, so hope to see you there.